This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Ravel Germany's C54, Merritt's USS John F. Kennedy, Model Collect's E75, and Mobius's Ranger from Interstellar. Hi and welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown, our twice monthly expose on kits and accessories. I'm Tim Kidwell. And I'm Aaron Skinner. And first of all, I have a mea culpa. In the last episode, I said that Freedom Model Kit's 148 scale F20A was the first time that the Tiger Shark had been done in that scale. Now, I was wrong. Monogram did one in the 1980s when the aircraft was flying. My apologies to everyone. Now, let's get on with this week's show when we have the 172nd scale Ravel Germany C-54. Now the DC-4 was designed as an airliner in the 1930s, but with the onset of World War II, most were conscripted into the uh, military. The Skymaster, as it was known in military parlance, became the backbone of the U.S. military long-range transportation system. The C-54 was capable of carrying up to 50 people, and most of them soldiered on through the Korean War to become airliners afterward. Its most conspicuous role came during the Berlin Airlift, when more than 300 were used to ferry food and fuel to the blockaded city. Finely engraved panel lines mark the surfaces of the major parts. The fuselage captures the classic Douglas shape very well. The comprehensive flight deck includes instrument panel, controls, and seats with molded belts. Behind the cockpit is the navigator radio operator position with racks of equipment. Moving further aft, there's a crew rest area and then the cargo passenger compartment. The latter features a full complement of webbing seats along the walls. Interestingly, the floor has molded locators for what we assume to be airliner seats. That and the fact that both the inner and outer fuselage parts have molded cut marks for the C-54 cargo door and DC-4 passenger door indicate an airliner version may be in the offing. You'll want to leave the doors open to display all the interior detail. There's more in the wheel wells and the engines are little masterpieces. All four have firewalls, exhaust collectors, detailed crankcases, and two rows of cylinders. There are optional carburetor intakes on the nacelles, although the marking options in this kit only use one. The kit provides optional noses for radar and non-radar equipped planes. Separate, movable control surfaces are included, and optional parts allow the flaps to be posed up or down. You'll have to do some surgery for the latter. A clear sprue supplies cabin windows, windshield molded with part of the forward fuselage for easy blending, astrodome, and lights. Decals provide markings for two U.S. Air Force Skymasters. One, a high-visibility white-topped transport, the other, a Berlin airlift carrier. So, obviously it looks great in the box, but how does it build? And it's 172nd scale, and you know who loves 172nd scale? FSM's longtime senior editor, Paul Boyer. Paul. Gentlemen. How you doing? Hey, good. Good. What I think we're going to do is we're just going to give this thing to you and uh, can you build see how you can build it. Sure. Sweet. I'll be right back. Okay, cool. In the meantime, let's, uh, what's, the, what's next on the agenda? Uh, next, we have the big USS John F. Kennedy from Merritt. He's... Uh, I'm crazy. I didn't realize I was going to have to wear oh, a helmet. Oh, no, get, get rid of this. He's already done. Wow. There we go. Nicely done, sir. Wow. Did you time me? Uh, no, I didn't <laughs> have a chance. <laughs> it all happened so fast. Yeah, this is, the, this is the model. Actually, it took me a little longer than about 30 seconds. Okay. But uh, it went together really well. I was really surprised at the amount of detail. Much of it, you end up not being able to see in the finished model because it's all packed inside. But, but you know it's there, right? Yeah, I know it's there. But it uh, really goes together well. No fit problems. Accuracy looks really good. No major problems you encountered? No major problems at all. Beautiful work. Thanks, Paul. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. That was great. The last conventionally powered carrier in the U.S. Navy was the USS John F. Kennedy, which was commissioned in September 1968. It served almost 40 years, launching missions both for Desert Storm and Enduring Freedom. Now, as a kid on a family vacation, I built Italeri's 1 720th scale Kennedy, so I've always had a soft spot for the big carrier. Last year, I was lucky enough to see it from the air as I was landing in Philadelphia, where it's moored in the river. So, you're pretty excited for Merritt's 1 350th Kennedy? 
Absolutely. And judging by what's in the box, I think most fans of big post-World War II carriers will be. It does look good, and as a bonus for less experienced modelers, the use of photo-etched metal is kept to a minimum. There's just two small frets providing flight deck safety nets and a mast for the radar dish. No railings are given, so super detailers will have to rely on the aftermarket. The basic model looks terrific with a one-piece hull with molded straps and other details. The slide molded bridge complex is beautiful. The hangar deck is included with enough detail around the large openings to look good from outside. This is a full hull model, so the parts include rudders, strakes, and four shafts and screws. There are lots of bulges and extensions for the hull to incorporate boat decks, defensive weapons, and more. The single-piece flight deck features molded tie-downs, catapults, and arrestor wires. The jet blast deflectors can be posed up or down. The elevators are separate, and additional parts detail deck overhangs. Surface detail is first-rate throughout. That quality extends to small items like antennas, boats, life rafts, ladders, and the Phalanx CIWS and other defensive items. Those weapon systems indicate that the model is meant to represent Kennedy later in her career. The choice of aircraft supports that. The air wing, which appears to be appropriate for the Kennedy's final Persian Gulf deployment, includes E-2C Hawkeyes, S-3B Vikings, HH-60H Seahawks, F-14B Tomcats, F-A-18C Hornets, and E-A-6B Prowlers. And they don't skimp on the aircraft, offering five of each of the fighters and several of each of the others. Molded in clear plastic, they're detailed, too, with folded wings for several separate gear and weapon pylons. Decals provide national insignia, tail markings, and even some stenciling for the planes. A separate sheet has deck striping and numbers for the carrier. Very nice. Model Collect is a new Chinese manufacturer producing fine, detailed 172nd scale kits like this E-75. A project that was on the boards of German planners at the end of World War II. This one mounted a 128mm gun on a chassis and turret very similar to a Tiger II. Model Collect's kit consists of three plastic sprues and separate upper and lower hulls. The impressive molding includes crisp panel lines, bolts, and open grills. Tools and cables are molded on, but the road wheels and their arms are separate. The turret hatches are poseable, and the main gun comes as a terrific turned metal barrel with open fluting in the muzzle brake. The tracks are one-piece vinyl items reminiscent of Dragon's newest kits and with good detail. Photo-etched metal provides engine screens, periscope covers, and lifting rings for the turret. The Ultra version, which this kit is, comes with an extra photo-etched metal fret with replacement fenders, hatch handles, turret tie-downs, and spare track racks. The painting diagram shows a single E-75 in late war camouflage with turret numbers and crosses. There are a lot of unused decals on the sheet. Interesting subject choice in a small box. Looks like a winner. Even before Christopher Nolan's science fiction epic Interstellar hit movie screens, readers answering our most wanted kit survey were looking for models of the ship from the film. Mobius has answered those requests with a 172nd scale kit of the Ranger Transgalactic Survey Craft. The bone-colored plastic parts have deep panel lines, window frames, and thrusters. The windows are molded solid with the hull parts, so there's no interior. The engines, landing gear, these are designed to be posed down, and the entrance hatch have good detail. A large, three-view color diagram clearly shows paint and decal placement. There are even templates to mask the complex pattern on the rear fuselage. As an extra, the kit includes a 1144 scale launch module with two Rangers on the center section. It's designed to fit on any 1144 scale Saturn V rocket. If you want to boost your Ranger, check out the photo etch metal set from Paragraphics. It ups the finesse of detail on the rear airlock and the vertical takeoff and landing louvers under the ship. And if you want to replace the solid molded windows with clear, the set provides new upper fuselage panels with open frames. If you cut out the kit parts and use the set's clear plastic sheet, you can see inside. But you'll need to detail the interior or paint the inside of the glass black. Look for reviews of the Kennedy, the E-75, and the Ranger in future issues of Fine Scale Modeler. And Paul's review of the C-54 will be in the December issue. And you can see more of these and other new products in the October issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting finescale.com. They call me Tim.
I call him a lot of other things. I'm Aaron. We'll see you next time. My apologies to everyone. You notice how hard it is for him to apologize to you? You notice that? Halting, stilted. Can we get on with the show? No, no, not after that. I'm out.